Okay, welcome back. I will continue with this Fred because I want you to completely understand. Okay, so let me first deal, deal the, uh, talk about with this particular example. In this example, I have two fluorophores and this is my anthracene uh, fluorophore and this diazo, this is a diazo compound as fluorophore. Okay. So, now this thing, this compound we had, we dissolved in solution and distance between them within 30 angstrom, say 1 to 30 angstrom distance approximately should be. This is within 30 angstrom. Uh, we have done the measurement of distance from this value and that came out to be quite accurate and that value I do not remember, maybe around 15.5 angstrom something like that. Okay. So, they are very, very accurate systems these things. So, therefore, I have about 1 to 30 from uh, within 30 angstrom these two fluorophore. And this is important absorption spectra of not absorption emission spectra of anthracene. Emission spectra of anthracene overlaps with absorption spectra of diazo compound. Emission spectra of anthracene okay, overlaps, there is a point of this is overlap area, overlaps with the absorption spectra of the diazo fluorophore, its emission, its absorption. So, it absorbs. In that case, when we excite this fluorophore, it will be excited and then it will emit, but I do not see its emission spectrum. Why? I do not see its emission spectrum because this emission energy will be completely transferred, transferred to the diazo compound provided the distance between about up to around 30 angstrom and orientation is perfect or, the, or you can say that dipole moment of both should match. Okay, there should not be one is like this, another is like this orthogonal, no. If they are like this matching, then only there will be transfer, there will be transfer of energy completely to the diazo. So, diazo gets the energy from anthracene. So, anthracene gave, uh, was excited, it emits, it comes down and energy given to diazo and is saying whatever you want to do, do. Then diazo is excited because it has got energy, all energy from uh, anthracene. So, diazo is excited, fluorophore, when it comes down, it gives emission spectra of the diazo. So, in this compound, I was, if I was looking for anthracene emission, I will not see at all anthracene emission will be like a background, but diazo compound will be a strong emission peak. So, this is called Forster, earlier it used to call fluorescence, now it is Forster is a scientist who did lot of work with this Fred. So, now it is called Forster resonance energy transfer or in short Fred. So, FRET is a very important technique for biochemist, molecular biologist, very important fluorescence technique to understand the physiology of a bi of biosystems. Okay. As I told you, so now I am telling you, I go back to my this one. In this case, in this case, I told you that there is an active site and near the active site, there is a fluorophore. 
because natural natural protein will have any of the three fluorophores amino acid which are fluorophore in nature fluorophoric that is phenyl alanine tyrosine and tryptophan so suppose this is a tryptophan don't ask me what is the emission spectrum of tryptophan what does it absorb what does it emit i forgot okay but what i will see i will tell you that so so for tryptophan it is known okay it is known or we can dissolve it and see it what is the absorption what is the emission so when some work is going on at the active side suppose active side got something okay and it is doing chemical reaction when it does chemical reaction there is a lot of changes takes place lot of changes takes place in these amino acid they do this kind of that they are not fixed they do this that this that that's why it is so reversible and so efficient okay so when this tryptophan when this active site is working this tryptophan was like this now it became like this okay now it became like this suppose or um, uh, all right so this is a supposition suppose the other so what i will do i put a mutation and put a fluorophore here fluorophore we supplied which fluorophore i will supply this fluorophore absorption spectrum this fluorophore absorption spectrum will coincide or will have some overlap with the absorption spectrum of this tryptophan okay then all the energy emission energy from this fluorophore will be transferred will be transferred to this particular tryptophan so it will be transferred when when my uh, tryptophan was this this way oriented okay then it will be transferred if it is still like this okay dead meat it is a dead nothing will happen when it is like this means very stable and no reaction is going on here but some reaction is going on it is like this because of conformational changes in the backbone it is like this so whenever it is like this if i excite it complete energy transfer will take place so i will not see emission spectrum of my red one red fluorophore that i put but i will see emission spectrum of my of this natural fluorophore so what is the percentage of energy transfer that will tell us the orientation of this natural fluorophore it is not the always it will be 100% 100% transfer maybe 50% transfer if that is 50% transfer then i will see 50 percent my emission here and 50 percent emission here so then i will say that the orientation is not perfect but maybe some angle like that okay that we can design some compound and come to the conclusion okay so by this technique you can know what is going on at the active side and proteins active side some work is going on or some chemical reaction is going on that will give you the idea of the physiology of that biosystem maybe a physiology of my of my physiology okay so if they put a particular fluorophore if this is tryptophan if this is phenylalanine then i have to see where the phenylalanine absorb and where it emits then where it absorb i have to choose a fluorophore whose emission whose emission 
will match with the absorption spectra of phenylalanine. There, the, in that case, my fluorophore will be a different one, not this one, but it will be a, maybe a green one. Is a different fluorophore. Say, different fluorophore. Understand? So this way, Fred. And you know that fluorescence is very, very sensitive, very sensitive, very quite accurate. So, therefore, from this fret, I would be knowing the physiology of that biosystem. Okay. So, this uh, so this will actually monitoring what is happening inside me it can be monitored by equipment okay by looking at the emission efficiency of this fluorophore if the fluorophore is perfectly aligned because this is i know the alignment of this so if i know the alignment of that also and it 100% transfer then i will say that this alignment is this way so this alignment must be this way because it is 100% transfer all right, then I will see another part. Okay. This is really fun. So, the electronically what we write is this one, another experiment we will write. Let me write this. This is fluorophore. I'm writing fluorophore. Fluorophore one. Fluorophore two. Fluorophore three. This will be. We can call it donor. This is the energy level. Okay. Donor, and this is transmitter it transmits transmitter and this is acceptor it accept the energy okay so what will happen if i excite there were two electrons if i excite one will be up And then, if there is matching, if there is matching overlap, that is emission matches with absorption of this, then what will happen? It will come here. It will come here. But now, there is also matching between 2 and 3. Therefore, it will from transmitter will come here. And this will give you emission. So, I excited this, but I found emission from here. So, this is very interesting. Let me let me write a actual a system which will show you, which will show you We have done some work on this and I am showing you our com. That is why I am always showing you this Krypton with any system you can do. We have taken several systems and did that, but here it is easily available with us and here in this note also this is there so i am trying doesn't mean that this is the only one okay okay 
Okay. So, now this is also possible because we can one after another I can do. Huh. Okay, and then anthracene. Okay, and then diazo. Okay. Why we have chosen these three? One, two, and three. Three different fluorophores we have chosen following this. Okay. In dissolving solution. Now, what is happening? I excite this. I only excite this. And what emits? This one emits. Okay. It is very interesting that you excite this one, say this one can be excited around 300 nanometer, okay. around 300 nanometer and it will emit at 600 nanometer. Why? Because when I excite it, then its excitation, then its emission band, its emission band matches with the overlaps with the absorption band of anthracene. So, therefore, energy is completely transferred to anthracene. Okay. Remember all these things work only in solution phase, solution phase at room temperature fine in solution. Okay. So, when I excite this, this one gets excited because energy is transferred from here. But when this one is excited, it transfer energy to here and this one now emits. So, this one does not emit, this one does not emit, only this one emits around 600 nanometer. So, it is a beautiful way of saying that. So, this one is transmitter this one is donor, this one is acceptor okay. and this will take place when I have a metal ion here, because metal ion acts as a connector. Otherwise, if I excite it, there will be PET. So, in presence of say zinc or any metal, zinc, okay, I excite it, I excite this one but I get emission from here, no emission from here or here, because the energy is completely transferred to here and energy is completely transferred to here in solution phase and they have all single bond. So, they can rotate and get the orientation proper themselves in solution phase, so that energy can be transferred 100 percent. All right. I will tell you another, another picture that also we did. Okay, let me draw here now, same thing this one cartoon. Okay. Basically, once we got them, we started playing with this 
have fun. Okay. Okay, so this then same thing this fluorophore again. Okay, two of these, and then here Anthracene and then again. So, we see here diazole. and then here also. Okay. NO2. So, this compound, so this is also 1, 2 and 3. So, it goes a long range fret, it is a long range fret. I excite it, I see emission from here. So, when I excite it, all energy will be transferred from here to here and all energy will be transferred from here to here. So, when I excite it, this is excited and we see a very significant amount of emission and no emission from here or here. So, long range. So, therefore, we were trying to make 5 different, you can imagine that you can make a different one. play with it. F 1, F 2, okay, let it be this, then then F 3, this is F 3, this is F 4, F 5. So, you can see F 1 you excite, 
energy will be transferred, transferred, transferred to F 5. And if you, this one you excite in U V range, you get emission at infrared. So, that way you get infrared light that is also important. So, there are many, many importance of this fret. In biology, this is the this is a very versatile tool. People work day in and day out with versatile with this uh, uh, fluorescence technique. So, therefore, when I discuss supramolecular chemistry, let me summarize what I did in supramolecular uh, chemistry of uh, fluorescence in fluorescence sensing. I did worked on sensors. We talked about sensors, sensors for different metal ions and anion. Okay. There are some sensors for neutral molecules are also there like glucose. Glucose sensing is important for diabetes and all that, that also sensors are available. So, sensors okay. and uh, then we did logic gates, logic gates are important for information processing or chemical computers. Okay. So, these two then I did, then what I did? Then I did optical nonlinearity, optical nonlinearity, and finally. I did fret. So, these are few of the items, these are few items that I discussed at length. This is so like that. So, you have a supramolecular synthon, you start and then design your uh, design your uh, system for any of these system, any of these uh, studies for sensing logic gate or optical nonlinearity or fret for different purposes so this this way supramolecular chemistry goes now after doing this what will be left uh, in this part supramolecular chemistry one i will describe now amplifiers okay so this is up to that Another use that I give, so I want to be ahead in terms of use, uses, so that in supramolecular chemistry too, when I take up, I will always having uh, some more time. Okay, so, I will do synthetic amplifiers. synthetic amplifiers. Okay. What is an amplifile? Amplifile basic structure is like this, this is an amplifile means a head group, this is called a head group. Head group, and this is called a tail. Tail. This will be hydrophilic. and this will be hydrophobic. So, this is the synthesis of 
So, this can be synthesized. I will talk about this kind of molecules now and what can you do. So, this is also another important supramolecular synthon, this amphiphiles. Amphiphiles also known as surfactants. Surfactants means surface active agents. Okay. So, this is I just introduce you today. So, from next day onwards, I will be doing synthetic amphiphiles or what is also called surfactants. Surface actants means surface active. So, this way we will let us start some few lectures. Thank you very much.